This is the third time Michigan has ever been a one seed, and the first time since second year head coach Dewan Howard was suited up for the Wolverines himself. Howard is an exciting pick for the job when longtime head coach John Beeline headed for the NBA, but no one expected him to be this successful this quickly. Oddly enough, his scheme differs from his predecessor, but not in the ways you might expect. Howard's coaching philosophy is decidedly more old school, and you can see that with how they use their talented freshman center, Hunter Dickinson. Michigan likes to run their offense from the inside out. While they have some interesting motion concepts held over from Beeline, they're much more focused on feeding the big man in the post. Notice here how every pass their eyes go toward finding a window for an entry pass. But if they're having trouble finding passing lanes, they have some interesting sets to get the big man the ball. Here this player comes off a corner pin down, wraps around the paint, and sets a back screen on the big man for a UCLA cut to the basket. FSU switches everything, so one of Michigan's goals might be to switch Dickinson onto a guard like you see here, which forces the defense to overcompensate, and Michigan will take this look all day. In this instance, FSU will front the big man and make this pass as difficult as possible. In fact, one of the reasons for Dickinson's success this early in his career is he is surrounded by excellent three-point shooters who space the floor for him. At pretty much any point, there are four people on the court who are shooting at or above 40% from beyond the arc. Their desire to work inside out functions with their spread ball screen action as well. Here this high ball screen flows into a pin down, and all of this action on the top side of the court means this tag man responsible for helping has completely abandoned his man in the corner. There's so much to talk about with this Michigan offense. I haven't even had the opportunity to touch on Mike Smith's ability as a point guard to both distribute and score or Franz Wagner's ability to do anything you could ask for a wing to do. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the defense. Their defense is difficult to put a clean label on. Typically, defenses either play gap defense, meaning one pass away the player splitting the difference between his man and the ball and cheating towards the basket, think pack line, or denial, where the defender is cheating up into the passing lane and generally hugs tighter to his man to discourage the easy pass. Michigan tends to not really play either. They don't help off ball, but they don't really get into the passing lanes, as indicated by their extremely low steal percentage. They play about as true man-to-man -man defense as you can play, think matching colored wristbands, and that's because they trust their guys to keep a good position. Take this stagger ball screen by LSU for example. Here you can see that they typically play drop coverage for ball screens, which gives the person playing the ball handler time to work over the top of the screen. Then on this drive, notice how little help Wagner is given, yet he keeps his feet and makes a great play. The fact that they have the third best defensive two-point percentage and they don't really help in the paint is a testament to how good their on-ball defense is, especially their centers. However, I do think there are places FSU can look to exploit this defense. Firstly, FSU is probably one of the hardest teams to match up against one-on-one -on -one in the country. Take this play for instance. Michigan will most likely have to defend Raekwon Gray with either Franz Wagner or Brandon Johns. Gray has 20 pounds on Johns and 40 on Wagner. That's a tough matchup without any help on a post up. I also think that Scotty Barnes can have some good opportunities to back down 5'11 point guard Mike Smith, although he has shown that he's pretty elite at getting in the right position to defend bigger guards. But there are no easy answers to beating this extremely solid Michigan defense. However, LSU could have laid out a bit of a blueprint for the Knolls. I really like this high ball screen look. It pulls Dickinson away from the basket and makes him defend in space. FSU also needs to speed up Michigan. They want to slow you down and they have proven time and time again if you can't speed the game up, they'll slowly wear you down with their size and shooting. LSU did a good job of running the court at any opportunity. This is a good matchup. Michigan has been a better team than FSU all year, but they're missing Isaiah Livers, who is one of the better players on this team. Add to that the fact that Michigan isn't going to cause a lot of turnovers, which has really been FSU's Achilles heel all year. What's really interesting is both teams are trying to force isolation possessions, and so it will all come down to who can win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. Thanks for watching. I've linked below a video done by Hoop Vision that really goes into depth of this Michigan offense. Everybody should check it out if you're interested in this matchup. Also, make sure to check out Tomahawk Nation for all the other great FSU content. Thanks.